Hello guys, Vengeance are here. We're on BDO today. Let me turn this off real quick before I get into what I was doing. Um, if you're not subbed, go ahead and sub. Welcome back to everybody who is subbed, and thanks for growing my channel. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, let's run over here to Duvin Croon. I was finishing up the uh, 2000... Where the how the how did that happen? What in the world? All right, horse. You crazy, but all right. You took a bunch of damage for no reason. So, I was over here finishing up killing 2,000 monsters for the Jatina quest, trying to uh, do some grinding a little bit. Actually just dropped the Blood uh, Oath, so that makes three. We're getting there. <laughs> Very slowly. And I had done part of the 2,000 kill monsters last night before I went to sleep. So that's why I only got 5,000 trash loot instead of... I didn't do a full hour. But... I was over here grinding and I was thinking, I've been playing a lot of different games for content recently. And it got me to thinking about just games in general and Black Desert since, you know, it's kind of the main game that I play. We've done a lot of videos here on the channel on BDO and different tips, tricks, guides, <clears throat> just daily updates mostly recently, but... Um, I was wondering, I got to thinking about it, how would a new player even approach Black Desert at this point? Like, there's so many things to learn. Uh, even whenever I started back in 2016, 2017, somewhere around there, I forget exactly when, but this character's got 856 days played. So, you know, it's it, it's been a while. But a lot of the systems, you know, were in place, but things have changed over the years and we kind of got gradually used to it for uh, those of us who've played a long time so it makes me wonder how would somebody get into the game new and i kind of wanted to do a little bit of just my take on what you should be worried about as a new player and if i could go back and wipe everything I've done and go back and just start BDO for the first time. Uh, you know, starting over. Uh, just starting out. I don't need those because I forgot to dump that in there. We'll dump you and you. So 34,000, that's not too bad so far. The uh, rest of this stuff will tote back to Heidel while I'm uh, talking. Did my farms this morning, empty my inventory of all the fish overnight. So I'm going to go over a couple things that I think a uh, new player would benefit from. Like if you were starting out, I would definitely, if it's the first time you're creating a character, I would go with season. You get so much free stuff. Uh, inventory space is not really an issue anymore because they give away so many inventory slots. It was a super big issue whenever I first started playing. We ended up having to buy most of ours. But now they give away so many that it, it's just a non-issue. <clears throat> kind of the same with weight increases because you get the free weight increases with loyalty. Which I need to go through and look at the loyalties. But you get several weight increases. Uh, you can get four of these. So that's 200 weight increase. And then... Uh, you also get a family weight, so that helps out there. And then there's other ways of getting weight increases through just events and stuff that give some of that stuff away sometimes. But the only other thing that I would worry about as far as characters go, definitely make sure you're logged in and get the loyalties. Uh, they help out. But starting with a season character would be... Whenever I started playing, that, that wasn't a thing. <clears throat> so you get a whole huge amount of advantages and you can get gear geared and caught up very quickly with the uh, the season 
So that pretty much takes care of uh, character stuff. But how do you approach how to play the game? Uh, I mean, there's quests, there's leveling, there's life skills, there's all the knowledge. And my advice on that is to probably do the main quest to get through the season stuff. I mean, you're going to have to do some of it for the season pass anyway. But it's going to touch on the knowledge. And start getting you some contribution points and uh, energy. So that, that'll kind of push. Uh, plus, doing other quests will give you uh, a lot of free crap and benefits as well. There's a lot of main quests to go through. But the thing that I think is overwhelming for me, if I remove myself from what I know and look at it from the outside looking in, just like, where do I even start? Uh, there's so many different life skills on here, but I would definitely say pick what you like to do. Uh, if you don't like the life skill, then 100% go all in and try and gear up and just grind. Uh, look up some builds and stuff like that and do the best you can for PvE and then switch over to PvP when you get high enough gear. But if you are into life skills or kind of both like I am, uh, I'm kind of in the middle. I like to grind, but I also like the life skill aspect. I would say to maybe not dive into all of them like I've done. Uh, specializing is going to make you get further. But I would pick a couple of different life skills that you can just really dive into. I mean, you can either... The main active one you're going to have and is going to be gathering any of the gathering uh, professions. And then hunting is pretty active. Um, trading and farming are kind of... You, you basically have to wait. Uh, so those are a little bit slower. Bartering is more active than farming, but it's still going to be a little bit slower. Because you have to go around and you're probably not going to have a ship straight off. So I'd recommend picking one of the gatherings that you can do if you're a life if you're a life skill person and like to do that. I would pick one and dive into it, and then I would pick an AFK activity and a semi AFK activity. So AFK being you can leave overnight, which there's two of those. There's either gonna be fishing or training. Fishing is going to be more profitable than horse training. However, horse training is important for new players because you need a mount. And then semi-AFK is going to be cooking, processing, or alchemy. Processing is probably going to be the most profitable, followed by cooking and then alchemy. Alchemy is valuable because of drafts. You want the drafts. If you make them yourself, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you make them yourself, you're going to make more profit off of it than... If you were to spend your silver and buy the drafts. Uh, cooking, same thing. There's meals that benefit you when you're grinding and doing other things. If you make them yourself, you get more out of it than if you were to just buy them. You're going to save some silver. And processing is just purely processing raw materials and then selling them. Or processing them and then using them in cooking and alchemy and stuff. So... And the reason those three are semi-AFK is because you set them and you let them go. And the only thing that limits you in the cooking is the cooking utensil. The alchemy is the alchemy utensil. And processing is going to be your inventory weight. Uh, so you have to check it ever so often. Clear your inventory or reset up until it runs out of resources. Um, so it's semi-AFK. Fishing and training are completely AFK because you set them and forget them. Uh, as long as you have a decent fishing rod that is going to make it to where you don't run out of durability, you can fish indefinitely. Same with horse training. As long as you have horse feed and your horse doesn't run out of stamina, you can horse train indefinitely. So, 
that's what I recommend on life skills for new players. That kind of gives you a well-rounded thing. But I was, I would, what made me originally think about that little thought. And let me do the uh, Black Spirit adventure. Gotta get my dice. That's another thing. Collect your dice every day. I have 103. You do get pretty good rewards from these. Uh, every 10 rounds you get a Black Spirit Avenger box. And then uh, or every round you complete. And then every 10 rounds you get one of these special boxes. And that repeats. First round, time you do it you get pretty good stuff. And then you repeat you get these uh, special boxes. You can select what you need. But what made me think about it was uh, setting my horse up over there at Blood Wolves to if you have a leave it AFK you while I <laughs> grind it. Within your allowed space, of course. Um, I don't need any of that stuff. Let me... That goes in there. That goes in there. This goes here. That goes there. The rest of the stuff goes to Velia. And the reason I was thinking about uh, that stuff is because my my horse, in most places, it still gets attacked in blood at Blood Wolves. But in most places, my horse doesn't get attacked, and it's because it's high level. So you can level your horse if it's a tier eight horse and it's a courser, or if it's a tier nine or tier ten horse. You can level your horse all the way to a hundred. I have not chosen to actively level it but it has passively gained some levels it's level 57 uh 30 it stops learning skills and gaining stats but after 30 you can level you can keep going and it goes all the way to 100 there's some people on the server that have level 100 horses and they said at round level 75 80 everything stopped attacking their horse so it's beneficial if you can get a tier 8 Corsair or tier 9 or tier 10 horse to level it up at least to 70 to 80. Because then you can just drop your horse wherever and nothing's going to attack it ever. Um, so that's beneficial. Plus if you go get the Crocodile Horse Arbor. Sorry. It's pretty early here in the morning been a long week and it's only Tuesday yeah but if you get a crack dollar or horse armor uh, each armor set has benefits I've got the win one most people do because it gives you plus 5 AP for an hour uh, when you use roar I haven't upgraded it yet I guess we could do that real quick I don't know what the fail stacks are on this horse armor, but you know what? We can find out. Let's do that today. Why not, right? Welcome to Velia. Need to use the storage? Um, these. Let's get out a hundred of these. Why not? Let's see what we what we got to work with here. Uh, one because I don't want to deal with that. Um, this one has some DP. Oh, I see. So it's gonna be one of those things where we're going to uh, need some fail fail stacking. This is why I haven't done it because I don't want to have to pay to repair the durability when it fails. But I got plenty of fail stacks. I got plenty. Let's uh, give her a 10. I got a few. Um, I've got a few memory fragments as well. Oh, there's a fail. And we lost a little bit. That's alright. I got plenty of artisan memories and memory fragments for this. 
So four, it won't go down, but six onwards, it will, it looks like. Um, we got plenty of 20 stacks. Let's pop that one on there and see what happens. I don't like to skip animation. I know it takes longer, but I feel like if you skip animation, it kind of messes things up. I should have used a higher stack, I suppose. So plus four to plus five is going to be similar to Pride of Duo, I guess. Alright, so we're at 80. Oh, uh, what can we use here? 25, 30 stack. Oh, right. Because if we do that, we're going to need higher stones. I'm not spending higher stones on this. So we're at 65. Um, horse, 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 mount. Wind, what is the difference? 40, so it added 25, and then that one's going to be, it'll go up. Okay. So here's what we got to do here. Uh, what does this one have? Movement speed... Acceleration, break, and uh, we want this one for movement speed. It's going to give it another half on the movement speed. We can surely get it to plus two without any fail stacks. get plus three without fail stacks 30 percent's not bad but i always fail 30 percent lucky maybe i should enhance uh something pin today um 20 stack because we're only going to plus five and 30 stack sure I need to use up some of these stacks anyway. I've got a bunch of them. Cool. Over durability drop on that guy. Um, what else do we need? So I've been contemplating. I got this 143 stack sitting, sitting here, not doing anything. I've got all pen armor now because I bought the last couple pieces because I got frustrated. And I figured, why not um, keep my stack? I need to build the stack up to 200 plus for uh, pin black star attempts. And I'm just going to cron stone the black star attempts, I, I believe. Uh, I'm not going to try to raw tap it because, for one, that's pretty expensive. And for two, I believe that... Um, I need, I'm, if I was going to raw tap, I would need backups, because all I have are my Tet Black Stars currently. 54%, eh, it's probably a little high, but whatever, it'll be fine. Cool. So, my theory is that if I try to pin... If I try to pin a butcher knife, I'm going to need it anyway. We're not doing too bad on the 30 and 40 percent today. Pretty good. But if I try to pin a butcher knife, uh, if I fail, it'll increase our stack. But if it succeeds, I get a pin butcher knife. So I'm considering very heavily getting a secondary Manos uh, butcher knife and trying to pin it for raw, ta raw tap it. That might, I mean, I've got some other, I got a couple hundred stacks at a 110. 
We failed at 70 something percent. Come on now. You guys seeing this? Two seventy something percent fails in a row. What are the uh, odds on that one? But this is a little boring. But I I need to get it done anyway. I need to take this armor to plus ten. But past plus five, it gets kind of eh. It's more expensive when you fail because of the uh, upgraded stones and. Max durability, I think, will probably start going down by 10 instead of 5, I want to say. We get the 30 and 40 percents, but we uh, fail the 70s. That's craziness. Fail the 50 percent, too. Mm-hmm. I knew these stirrups were going to be a pain in the butt. Go ahead, fail again. So, yeah, if it goes down now, you lose 10 durability. I don't think I have any, uh... You can keep more goods if you get a house oh, I do have a few upgraded stones. Storage. I wonder if... That'll increase that, but that also increases movement speed by how much? Is it 0.5 every time? Uh, horseshoes. Wind. Okay, so five could be that. Six, six and a half. Seven, seven and a half. Eight. So yeah, if it goes to ten, it's eight percent movement speed. So it. It's more than double, but that's okay. We're uh, going to leave it where it's at. You can use the storage even at home. I'm just going to buzz back up here and repair this stuff. Uh, recover Max Dury. Cool. Use the artisan memory because I got a massive amount of those out of some of those uh, secondary boxes. If you plan on crafting, and it you saves the memfrags that I'm saving up. So I got a bunch of these uh, Gruno gloves and I can still craft a whole lot more. They're at duo. I wonder if I push these to Tet. Because I can use these, if they fails and the durability goes down, I got a bunch of uh, Gruno gloves that I can craft to use to repair them. But I wonder if I build a bunch more of these at duos and then push some of them to Tet, if I can grow my stack on pen attempts or if it's going to, if it's going to cause my stack to go away. You go away. You go on the horse. So I got 125 defense now, so hopefully it won't take as much damage. Um, 30,000 stamina, 43.6 thousand HP, not too bad. Movement speed, 158, acceleration, 155, turn 168, and brake, 164. It's not a bad horse. Uh, the speed could be a little better. Uh, I would like it to be in the 162 range, 161. 161, 162. Maybe if I push uh, these to plus 10, it'll push that up there. Acceleration, I don't care as much about. Turn and brake, nah. But speed, I would really like that to go up. So, get it to the next tier. But, if I do, I can get that to 160. Or 161. I forget where the cutoff is. Uh, but if I get that up, then I've also got the Manos Riding Crop that gives you plus 50% max auto run speed. So I can auto actually <clears throat> auto run faster and I get max mount speed plus 20%. 
I don't think it reflects it in the thing. So if I get on here at 158.7, it doesn't reflect it in the actual mount. Uh, stats, but you can tell the difference. Now if I take that off, you can tell the difference. Um, yeah, the 20% makes a heck of a difference. Especially if you're auto running somewhere. It just feels clunky. Without it. See how slow that is? If I put this guy back on here. Already you can tell the difference. So. But that's kind of where my head was at today i wanted to finish up on the jatina and i'm still working on the uh infinite hp potion i kind of decided i hate blood wolves so i'm gonna get those out of the way first Welcome to Valia. but it's we're 52 storage. we're getting there i need 58 more so i got another 24 days to go on that with grinding that which is what I've been working on while I've been away from BDO. And then I've also been working on silver. I have 3.6 billion here. I have amassed a massive amount of things to sell. Uh, these perfumes and stuff sell for a lot. I don't ever use them when I'm grinding. I know the AP plus 20 would probably help me grind in higher spots. Casting speed and move speed and stuff. But where I need to grind right now is places like Blood Wolves. The lower ones I need to finish out that HP and MP potion. So they're not required for where I'm grinding because I one-shot everything anyway. And then further down here, I just got a lot of junk and oils and stuff from doing alchemy. I sold some meat a while back. But we had an ogre ring and rift bosses were kind to me. I got um, ancient guardian seal, seal's necklace, seraphs, Layton, ring of crescent, ring of cadre, Force Runros. I dropped an Eye of the Runners ring at Blood Wolves. I got a Pry one out of a box. Got a Tungrad ring, Centaur Belt, uh, Voltara. I got a Pry Voltara out of a box, Orkinrad, and then a few other miscellaneous green accessories and treasure maps and stuff. Uh, but I've got all that. That's probably, I'd say there's a billion silver in, in all this mess, maybe. Um, maybe only five, six hundred million. Uh, between all of it but between that and i am stockpiling my trash loot from blood wolves i showed you that a little bit ago i haven't grinded very much but anytime i need to do a chitina quest i am grinding it so we're at thirty-four thousand. it's probably about three hours worth not quite two and a half hours worth i think i get fourteen thousand or so 12 to 14,000 depending on how enthusiastic I am uh, when killing. If I'm just chilling, it's somewhere around 12, 13,000 an hour. So there is that. And that's with the uh, level 2 um, item collection scroll thing on. But 34,000 on that. I expect by the time we're done, I'm probably going to end up with <sighs> 100,000 or more. It looks maybe a million trash loot. I don't know. It looks like 10,000 per piece. And I need 100 pieces. So. Unless we just get lucky and drop the. Actual Ash Half Moon one. While grinding. I'm going to have to push this all the way to 100. And so far I'm getting about 10,000 per piece. And I need 100 of these. So, so yeah. Probably going to be about a million trash loot. If I. If it keeps going on the pattern, then it's going. So, whatever, a million times. That's what, 7 billion silver? So we'll have quite a bit out of that. And then... I did hit my goal of 200 of these. I've actually passed the goal. But I'm going to set my fishing back up. And finish out the day. Because tonight, they're doing maintenance. And I think they're going to take the event out. 
uh, and it ends. But five billion, five million uh, piece for these, and I'm at, and same for these. So together, I'm at 254. Whatever 254 times five is, that's like not quite 2.3 billion. And then these are 1 million a piece, and I am at 720. So 720 million plus 2 point. So I got about 3 billion silver sitting in these four items. And no, I have not traded them and done any of that. Life skill mastery, that's great. Item drop, that's great. Mount XP and weight limit and energy recovery, it's fantastic. And same for the grinding ones. You get extra combat XP 100% for 10 hours. You know, that's great, but um, after the vent's gone, it's over. All you can do is NPC them. You can't trade anymore, so having a stockpile of these is not going to do me any good. But I want them for the silver. Uh, having 3 billion silver out of a fishing event, just sitting AFK while I'm getting other things done, is fantastic. So there is um, something to be said about that. So that 3 billion plus the 3 billion I have here... That's going to finish out the pen accessory quest because I have to have a try. Um, I got to have a try ring. And they're pretty expensive. They're one and a half billion. So I need that. Plus I'm going to have to buy all of the NPC items. And oh, the other thing. I've been turning in some of the alchemy things and I'm up to 117. I need 330 of these. So we're getting there. Um, what I'm going to do is if it gets closer and I'm not and it looks like I'm not going to have the magical shards at the same time as I get the Jatina stuff done then I think what I'll do is go grind centaurs and finish it out but I've been working on the alchemy to get these up and running and then same with the uh, black stones I'm just going to buy what's left on those so it's going to cost me a little more but I think 6 or 7 billion sil silver will get that accomplished because I'm going to need about 3 billion for the catalyst that I got to buy because I need 10 of these per 1 and I'm going to and they're 3.5 million each and I'm going to need 110 so whatever 110 times 10 is what 11 thousand I think it's quite a bit 1100 that's what it is so it's gonna cost me three and a half bill for this plus another bill for the ring you're looking at five billion right there and then whatever the um, blackstones cost which will be I need 11,000 of those total, and they're a couple hundred thousand a piece right now. So, a couple billion on that. So, I think seven, 7 billion or so will get it done, uh, and then we have some of that stuff collected already, and uh, we'll be making money back from the alchemy plus the uh, grinding for the rest of the mag magical shards and stuff and uh, the other silver that I've got. So, it should be... To where I have it done, and I don't have to um, wait f to grind silver out. But that is the last big upgrade that's easy on the account. I mean, we've got the pen armor, and we've already got the the Kabosha stuff to fill in for now. And I previously bought the Tet Tungrad earrings. And this is going to push us to 277 because that'll be three more. So we'll be at 277 uh, succession. Uh, 279 on Awakening. But really, I don't know where to go from here. I don't know what I want to work on. I think I want to... It's going to be hard to replace... It's going to be hard to replace a lot of these accessories quickly. So I think I'm going to put most of my silver into Krons and start pushing for the Pen Black Star Staff and then the Pen Black Star Dagger. This, uh, the, the Awakening Sphera, I'm not so worried about pinning it yet. It'll probably be my last thing that I do because of, I'm, I'm not Awakening, so it really doesn't matter to me. If I have stacks to throw at it, then yes, but... 
Black Star Staff is next on the list. And while I'm grinding Kaffirs out to dump into the armor, I want to get everything to level 5. And then I'm going to dump the rest into the Dim Tree to uh, push it for level 10 so I can change over the Fallen God and, and get my DP up. And then we'll work on the helmet after that. Um, but... I think the next thing after the pen, Black Star Staff, and then pen Dagger, throwing silver at that is probably going to be either replacing this ring to get it up to the same level as the pen Crescent. The pen Crescent's 20 AP, this one's only 17. So if we get this up to 20, that's another 3 easy AP. If not, then we're going to go for the Distos. Um, because... This is going to take at least a pen ogre to pump it up another 5 AP in the belt. We're not going to get much more out of the belt. So it'll probably be the last accessory I do, I think. Unless I'm mistaken. But if we get these over to Distos and we get this one over to a Debaraka, I think it is. Uh, that'll work. And then the rings, I don't know... I don't know where to go with rings. I don't know what to do for those. I don't know what best in slot is. Tungrad, I guess. I assume. But there really isn't that much uh, more. I mean, you're getting 21 AP. So I'm going to... On one side, I'm going to get one more. And then the other one, I'll get four more. So that even if I manage to get two pen Tungrads at 100 billion apiece... That's only five more AP, which I'm getting very quickly to the point where AP is becoming very, very expensive to get. And I could push for that and get five extra out of it, or I could just go ahead and try to uh, get my hands on the Debaraka, which is 40. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. The necklace and belt are going to be last on the list, I think. Because I don't know what to do. I guess the best in slot is a Debereka. Turo definitely isn't. It's the same as what I got. Altara is only a couple more than what I got. So either I'm going to have to go with... Pin Bazzi or Pin Valtara or... Um, in Tungrad, I guess. Yeah, I will have to go for a Tungrad belt. And then, of course, Bistos or uh, Baja, I think, is what they're called. They're pretty much the same on the earrings. Because what I got right now is 15. And that's the same there, so yeah. Distos or Vajas are going to be my next step on those. That is 6 AP just to get Tet Distos. So, that's what it is. We're going to finish this uh, pin quest on this. And then we're going to pin the Black Star Staff and the Black Star Dagger. And then we're going to push for Distos. And then once those are done, we'll push for Pin Tungrads. And then Tungrads or Debrakas on both of those. So, there you have it. There's the plan. But, we're getting there. I pushed this video a little too long. I think I rambled, but it's alright. Um, so, you guys have a good rest of your day. And I haven't really didn't accomplish much other than just talking. But hopefully you enjoyed listening and uh, took something away from it. So, I'm going to leave it at that, and as always, until next time.